Have you ever wondered why planes don't just plummet out of the sky when they're slowing down for landing? The answer lies in the ingenious design of high lift devices. These are crucial components in aircraft that enhance lift during crucial phases of flight. High lift devices come in two main types, flaps and slats. Flaps are movable sections on the trailing edge of the wing, while slats are situated on the leading edge. These devices are the unsung heroes of aviation, quietly working in the background to ensure our flights are smooth and safe. They manipulate the wing's shape, changing the airflow and increasing lift, especially when the plane is moving at slower speeds, such as during takeoff and landing. But like all good things, there are trade-offs and design considerations to keep in mind. Stick around to learn how these fascinating devices manipulate the laws of physics to keep planes aloft. Imagine you're a pilot preparing for takeoff. One of your key actions? Engaging the flaps. But why is that so important? Well, let's delve into that. Flaps are essential high-lift devices located on the trailing edge of an aircraft's wings. They play a pivotal role during the critical phases of flight, namely takeoff and landing. During these times, the aircraft needs to generate as much lift as possible at relatively low speeds. And this is where flaps come into play. By extending the flaps, pilots can increase the total wing area, which in turn increases the amount of lift produced. Essentially, flaps are like adding an extension to your house, providing extra space for air to push against and generate lift, but that's not all they do. Flaps also change the shape of the wing, making it more curved. This curvature, known as camber, is vital for lift generation. The more curved the wing surface, the greater the lift. So by increasing the wing's camber, flaps ensure that the airplane can maintain lift even at slower speeds, crucial during takeoff and landing. However, it's not just about creating lift. Flaps also help control the aircraft's speed. When extended, they increase the wing's drag or resistance to the airflow. This drag slows the airplane down, allowing it to descend gradually and safely during landing. So in a nutshell, flaps serve a dual purpose. They help airplanes achieve the necessary lift at slower speeds and control their descent rate during landing by increasing drag. But remember, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. While flaps increase lift and drag, they also increase the load on the wings and the aircraft's fuel consumption. These are factors the pilot must consider when deciding when and how much to extend the flaps. So the next time you're on a plane and you hear the whirring of motors during takeoff or landing, that's the sound of flaps doing their job. Now you might be wondering how exactly do flaps alter the wing's shape and lift? Well, let's dive right into it. In their normal state, wings are sleek and streamlined, designed to cut through the air with minimum resistance. But when a plane needs to take off or land, a little bit of aerodynamic magic is required. That's where the flaps come in. Flaps are essentially hinged sections of the wing that can extend or retract as needed. Picture them like the collar of a shirt, neatly folded down in normal conditions, but capable of being popped up when the situation calls for it. When the flaps are extended, they increase the curvature or camber of the wing, making it look more like a bird's wing in mid-flap. Now, why is this important? Well, it's all about lift. Lift is what keeps an aircraft airborne, and it's generated by the pressure difference between the top and bottom surfaces of the wing. The greater the pressure difference, the greater the lift. When the flaps are extended, the wing's top surface becomes more curved, while the bottom surface remains relatively flat. This increases the distance air has to travel over the top of the wing compared to the bottom. According to the Bernoulli's principle, when air travels faster over the top of the wing, it creates a lower pressure area compared to the bottom of the wing, where air travels slower. Like many things in life, using flaps comes with its own set of pros and cons. First, let's tackle the cons. When extended, flaps increase the drag on an aircraft. Drag, in aeronautics, is the force that resists the motion of the aircraft through the air. More drag means the engines must work harder to maintain speed, which in turn means more fuel consumption. In a world where fuel efficiency is a major concern, this might seem like a significant drawback. However, it's important to remember that flaps are typically used during takeoff and landing, when the aircraft is at a lower speed. At these times, the increased drag is actually beneficial because it helps to slow the aircraft down. Moreover, the increased fuel consumption is somewhat mitigated by the fact that flaps are retracted once the aircraft reaches cruising altitude, reducing the overall impact on fuel efficiency for the flight duration. Now, on to the pros. The main purpose of flaps, as we've discussed, is to increase lift. During takeoff and landing, the aircraft needs to generate as much lift as possible to either get off the ground or to land safely. Flaps achieve this by altering the wing shape, increasing the wing's surface area and its curvature, this leads to a higher lift coefficient, 
enabling the aircraft to fly at slower speeds without stalling. In this context, the benefits of increased lift far outweigh the drawbacks of increased drag and fuel consumption. The safety and control provided by flaps during the critical phases of takeoff and landing are invaluable. So, while it's true that using flaps does come with trade-offs, these are acceptable in the grand scheme of things. They are a tool, and like any tool, they are most effective when used in the right circumstances and for the right purpose. Designing an aircraft is indeed a delicate balancing act, and flaps are a prime example of this. So how do engineers decide on the design and use of high-lift devices like flaps? It's a question with a complex answer, much like the intricate world of aviation itself. Designing high-lift devices is not a one-size-fits-all endeavor. It's a meticulous process that takes into account a variety of factors, each playing a pivotal role in the overall performance and safety of the aircraft. Let's unpack some of these considerations. First and foremost, the size and weight of the aircraft are paramount. Larger, heavier aircraft require more lift to get off the ground and therefore might need larger flaps or multiple high lift devices. On the other hand, smaller aircraft might not need as much assistance, and thus smaller, more streamlined flaps could be the ideal choice. Then there's the intended use of the aircraft. Is it a commercial airliner that needs to take off and land at airports with shorter runways? If so, high lift devices that can generate a significant amount of lift at lower speeds would be essential. Or perhaps it's a military jet that needs to be able to take off and land on aircraft carriers. In this case, the flaps would need to be robust and capable of withstanding high levels of stress. Performance requirements for takeoff and landing are also crucial. High lift devices must be able to generate enough lift to get the aircraft off the ground, but not so much that it becomes unstable or difficult to control. They also need to be able to retract smoothly and quickly to reduce drag once the aircraft is in flight. Lastly, engineers need to consider the trade-offs. Every design decision comes with its own set of benefits and drawbacks. Larger flaps might provide more lift, but they also create more drag and can potentially increase fuel consumption. It's a delicate balancing act that requires careful thought and calculation. Designing high lift devices is as much an art as it is a science, requiring a deep understanding of aerodynamics and a knack for innovative problem solving. And that's what makes aviation so fascinating. Each aircraft is a testament to human ingenuity, a symphony of science and creativity in motion. So there you have it, a deep dive into the world of high lift devices and their role in aviation. We've explored the critical role of flaps during takeoff and landing, acting as the unsung heroes of flight. These clever devices alter the shape of the wing, increasing lift and allowing the aircraft to operate at lower speeds. But it's not all smooth sailing or flying, should I say. We've discussed the trade-offs of using flaps, including increased drag and fuel consumption. These factors play a vital role when designing an aircraft, as engineers must strike a delicate balance between efficiency and safety. Lastly, we've touched on the design considerations of these high-lift devices. From size to material and positioning, every element is meticulously thought out to ensure optimal performance. Next time you're flying, you'll have a newfound appreciation for the intricate dance of physics and engineering that keeps your plane in the sky. Until then, keep exploring the incredible world of aviation.